Hi guys, welcome to this quick Adobe Illustrator tutorial on how to add uh, grainy shadows to give your type a lettering depth. I'll just zoom in. We're trying to give this sort of impression that, like with this S, uh, this thin part of uh, the letter is going underneath the thicker part. We can do this with this custom lettering here, but you can do it with a typeface as well. So here's what we're going to be working on. But if you're using a typeface, then do uh, create outlines first. So go to type, create outlines, and then separate each of the letters into their own uh, components. So they're not grouped together. So you want to go to object, ungroup to do that. And I'm just going to do it on this S to show you the um, stages you go through, but it's the same process going through all the rest of the letter and where you want to put the shadows. Uh, so I'll do that quickly just so you can get on and do it with your own work. So first up, we just want to get the pen tool and we'll create a rough shape where we want the um, shadow to go. So just select a rough square, doesn't have to be a square, just the area we want. Fill it roughly with a uh, black and white gradient. Um, then we want to just quickly switch to outline mode, which is view outline and just shows us uh, in black and white just the where the edges of the path are because what we want to do is make sure that, that line there that we've got going there matches up with this line of the actual bold part so it, it sort of looks seamless in what we're trying to do uh, that looks okay i think and then we can go back to a preview mode and so now click on that gradient we want to get to the um gradient tool so we can adjust where we want the gradient to go so we know that this this part is going to create a shadow over there so just adjust it so you're happy with it making sure that this area is all white here so it blends out nicely now once we've done that we're going to create some effects to it or just one effect going to effect going down to the photoshop effects and texture and grain and here uh, under grain we want the intensity, we want to select uh, 40 for that. Contrast, we want 30, and the grain type to be stippled. And you can see here, it's got this, um, what the texture we're trying to achieve. And if you if you can see, if you move that, um, you have more of a black area, but then you get these dots over the white area. What we want um, is this or even spread. So once you've uh, done that, okay that, uh, and as you can see, it's uh, not showing through onto the color. So what we will need to do is change our transparency. We want to turn it to multiply, so it gets rid of the white. Um, and you can turn it down a bit if you need to, um, if you don't want it so old. You can just change it to like 50%. So it shows some of the color through as well. Now to uh, clip this to the actual object, what we're going to do is duplicate the letter so um, copy, so edit copy, and then we want to do edit paste in place. That's it. So we've got this extra one on top. But what we need now is that um, piece to be in front of uh, the bit we want to clip. So now we select the object and then holding on the shift key, select the secondary object. And then we right click, make clipping path. And then what happens is that shape disappears and we're just left with the shape that's being clipped there. So if you want to change that at all, then we double click on it and it goes to uh, isolation mode. And there we have our shape, which we can adjust or we can adjust the um, transparency again. So if you want to make it a lighter or darker, we can do that. Just select, double clicking across there. So now I want to do one the same process above. So first of all, we draw the shape we want to get. Go to outline mode. Making sure we're happy with that. Go back to preview. Gradient tool. Yeah, slightly lighter shadow there. Uh, we can then just apply the grain again from the history change transparency to multiply oh. 
and then what we do is then uh, we go to object or edit uh, cut double click on the um, other item we've done and then we want to paste in place again so that's edit paste in place inside that clipping path and now we can just double click outside of it and it's all in one there and there we have our shadow and you just do that you know if you want to put some there there uh, over the edge of the H you just adjust the shape to where you want it to and as you can see that well that bit rare around it uh, disappears because you sort of multiplied it now if you want to um, uh, turn this into an actual vector shadow because at the moment it's raster raster means it's limited on its size because of, of the using it a Photoshop effect to um, turn this into a, a vector shadow what we want to do is make sure it's on 100% and then we go to object expand appearance so we want to sort of turn that from what it was a live Photoshop effect into just a plain um, solid raster image because now what we're going to do is open up the image trace go to presets go to black and white logo turn snap curves to lines turn on ignore white we want to turn down noise turn down corners and then we just want to adjust the path and the threshold to you know how we want it we want to really find lots of detail obviously that uses up a lot more memory if you use more paths and just the threshold how much of it we want to come through and then it's good good idea just to save new preset call it shadows we can do that every time it goes straight to that one if we want it to and once we're happy we go up to expand and it's giving us that shadow and it's still clipped to the thing so if you done it there we have and so what we can do is once we double click in there we can select that and then we can actually give it a color because uh, there's no white in it so we can maybe give it a dark red and then we have our shadow there, which is vector as well, so it can be scaled to whatever size. Whereas the other one can't, but if you're if you're doing it 100% of what you're going to be using for, then that's fine. Um, I hope that was useful, guys. Um, please, as usual, leave any uh, questions in the comment section below, and I'll get around to answering for you. Um, but uh, yeah, happy creating, and uh, love to see what you've done with this effect. Cheers, guys. Bye.